Hey everyone, and welcome back to What If Kid Goku Turns Super Saiyan. This is part 12. As always, I'll leave links to the previous parts in the description and in the cards. Just before we begin, I'd like to remind you all to subscribe and ring the bell if you enjoy what I do here. It really does help me out. I'd also like to let you all know that I'm now on Patreon. If you guys feel like supporting me, you can do so there. The link will be in the description. Thank you very much. So, to recap, Goku transformed into a Super Saiyan early and wiped out King Piccolo, and as a result, Kami. He later made a deal with the other three Saiyans and obliterated Frieza. Then, along came Cell. The Cell games resulted in the tragic loss of Krillin, Yamcha, and Goku himself, but awakened the power deep within Gohan. With a little help from Uncle Raditz, Gohan obliterated Cell, leaving the world at peace. Goku completed Snake Way in less than an hour, and with help from both Kami and Kaio, discovered that planet Namek has Dragon Balls. So Gohan, Raditz, and Vegeta went to Namek. Their three wishes were granted with the promise of a further three from the Namekian Elder after a Namekian year had passed. Four months later, and Bardock and Gine were reunited with their family at last. This begun the seven years of peace. Gohan is a lot stronger this time around, having kept up with both his training and his studies. After being blackmailed by Videl, he and the rest of the gang join up to fight in the world tournament, even Goku who decided that now was the time to come back to life. After being interrupted by Babidi's minions and following them, the group was soundly defeated by Majin Buu. Goku, drained from using Super Saiyan 3, used his cunning to talk Buu into waiting a few days for a strong warrior. Gotenks almost defeated Buu, but defused after using Super Saiyan 3, prompting the others to join in. Once Goku lost Super Saiyan 3, however, Raditz, Bardock, and Gohan were forced to fight, working together to buy time for another fusion. This is where Gogeta was born. Gogeta fought Buu at Super Saiyan, using a special technique to defeat Buu once and for all. Or so they fought. You see, part of Gogeta recognised the good inside Majin Buu. Buu hadn't hurt anyone within the few days the gang had been perfecting fusion, with the exception of Bobbidi, of course. So, Gogeta decided to test how evil Majin Buu really was. He used a special technique called Stardust Breaker, a move that purges and destroys evil, as demonstrated in the Fusion Reborn movie. Of course, this technique purged all of the evil from Majin Buu, leaving his innocent self alive. After learning this, the Saiyans decide it might be worth keeping Majin Buu around. Raditz and Bardock especially know what it's like to be a changed person after only knowing evil. Goku agrees to keep an eye on him, and as much as Vegeta hates the idea, he sees the benefit of keeping someone that powerful on their side. He also vows to never resort to fusion, especially with Kakarot, ever again. This begins a peace that lasts four years, with only one interruption, in the form of Vegeta's brother Tarbal coming to Earth for help. There are virtually no changes to that special, aside from Raditz, Bardock, Gine, and Nappa being present, as Mr. Satan would be around, thanks to Videl. Four years since the defeat of Majin Buu, and a certain feline has begun to stir from his long slumber, with vivid dreams of the Super Saiyan God. Something important to remember here is that Goku doesn't know instant transmission this time around. In the manga, which I'm following here, there is no mention of Kaio knowing the technique, and as a result, Goku also does not learn it. I think it's important to mention now that he has learned the Kaioken and the Genkidama, or Spirit Bomb. Anyway, this means that Goku is actually at Bulma's birthday party when Kaio frantically contacts him about Beerus. He also contacts Vegeta shortly afterwards. This time around, Vegeta gets to witness Goku getting laid out by Beerus, even while using Super Saiyan 3. Of course, the Earth's Dragon Balls are used, and Goku becomes the first Super Saiyan God, with the help of Vegeta, Nappa, Raditz, Bardock, and Gohan. From this point onwards, the Battle of Gods plays out as it always does, with Beerus leaving the Earth intact. Time moves on, and Goku, Raditz, Bardock, and Vegeta all end up training with Whis on Beerus' planet. Because they always bring offerings of food, Whis doesn't really mind the extra people. Meanwhile, the Dragon Balls have been used once again, and the evil Emperor Frieza has made his return. Upon learning of the defeat of Majin Buu, Frieza decides to train for the first time in his life, and within four months, he makes his way to Earth. Most of Earth's warriors are there to greet him, like in the original, only with the addition of Goten, Trunks, and Nappa. 
Being the strongest present, Gohan leads the charge against Frieza's men. He's let himself go a little, but nowhere near as much as in the original. Frieza's blood boils at the sight of Gohan turning Super Saiyan. After learning that he's Goku's son, Frieza stops Gohan's heart with one attack. This time, it's Krillin who comes to the rescue, restarting Gohan's heart with his key and feeding him a senzu bean. With Frieza looming over them all, Gohan and Nappa both turn Super Saiyan, when Bulma shouts that Vegeta, Goku, Raditz and Bardock are on their way home and only need 5 minutes. Frieza isn't willing to wait for them, but he's confronted by a stronger Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Both Goten and Trunks have gotten significantly stronger, with Trunks' previous loss to Goten at the tournament spurring him onwards. Gotenks puts up a good fight against Frieza's final form, but he's ultimately pushed back until his fusion wears off. But before Frieza can kill the kids, Goku, Vegeta, Bardock and Raditz arrive on the scene. Bardock glares at Frieza. This is the monster who killed not only him, but his wife and his entire species as well. His Saiyan blood boils as he watches his son fight Frieza. The battle comes to a head as Frieza turns golden and Goku turns blue. Goku finds himself pushed back to begin with, but soon makes a comeback as Frieza starts to lose his stamina. Goku backs Frieza into a corner before Sorbet shoots him through the chest with his laser. Watching Frieza torture his son becomes too much for Bardock to bear. With a scream of rage, Bardock ascends into Super Saiyan God and launches himself at Frieza. At this point, Frieza still has enough power left to overwhelm Bardock in God Mode, and after a beating he's kicked away, only to be caught in midair by Raditz. That's when Vegeta steps forward. Vegeta easily defeats Frieza in Super Saiyan Blue, and the rest of the story goes as it originally did, with Whis rewinding time and Goku eventually stealing the win against Frieza. Not long afterwards, Champa comes to visit Beerus and makes an interesting proposition. A tournament between the strongest beings in their respective universes, with the prize for the winner being a wish from the Super Dragon Balls. Beerus accepts his brother's challenge. This time, the Universe 7 team consists of Goku, Raditz, Vegeta, Bardock and Nappa. The presence of Bardock and Raditz means that Beerus doesn't have to enlist Monica to fool Goku and Vegeta into training harder this time around. Goku and Vegeta head into the Room of Spirit and Time for the remaining three days, after it has been upgraded by Mr. Popo at the request of Whis. Meanwhile, Raditz and Bardock train within Whis's staff. Soon, the day of the tournament is upon them, and tensions are high. The Saiyans meet Kaba, a Saiyan from Universe 6, and learn about his planet, before sitting the written exam. This time, all five of them pass the test, Goku just scraping by. And with that, round one is set to begin. And that's where we'll end things for now. What do you guys think? How will the Universal Tournament play out? And what about Goku Black? Tune in next time to find out. I hope you guys enjoyed this what if, and if you did, please consider subscribing and dropping me a like. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.